Hi everybody. Welcome back to Environmental Organic Chemistry with Dr. Lisa. So we're going to start talking now about chapter 7, which is about organic liquid to water partitioning. And the organic liquid that we're mostly going to be concerned about is octanol. But uh, in your book, they're, they're dealing with other types of organic liquids too, which is why you have both KLW here, the little L, the little L, and you also have KOW, which is octanol water partitioning. So we go back to our very familiar diagram now. Uh, and we've talked about basically the whole left half. We talked about the pure phase. We talked about it partitioning into air. That's vapor pressure, right? Vapor pressure. We talked about water, partitioning of the chemical between the pure phase and water and between water and the air. And now it's time for us to fill in this other side. Uh, and we're going to be primarily focused on this KOW. Um, and we're going to use octanol as our organic liquid. And it's going to be our surrogate for all of the natural organic matter, NOM, biological things like lipids and proteins and stuff, uh, and also other solvents, because there are some scenarios in which environmental chemists use other solvents. So remember, we started with air in the pure phase because everything was ideal. Uh, and then we started to deal with water because there we had some non-ideal behavior. Octanol, most hydrophobic chemicals are going to behave pretty ideally in octanol. And so KOW is actually going to be a fairly easy topic because we've already covered so much ground. Um, so the partitioning coefficient, K, and now we're, here's your little chemical I. Here's the organic liquid and here's the water, K-I-L-W, um, is again just the equilibrium partitioning of the chemical between the organic liquid and water. So let's use this form of the equation. So this is um, just the concentration in the organic liquid here at equilibrium divided by the concentration in the water at equilibrium. And if we wanted to relate that back to activity coefficients, we could do it. We just would need to convert everything using the molar volumes of the water and the liquid. The problem is, what's the molar volume of natural organic matter? I don't know. So um, this is where the fascination with activity coefficients kind of takes us off the rails. So let's just really focus on this part. So it's just the equilibrium partitioning between the water and the liquid. And so KOW is the concentration in octanol divided by the concentration in water at equilibrium. Of course, the units of concentration in octanol are like moles per liter of octanol. Concentration in water is moles per liter of water. So you have um, liters of water per liter of octanol. That's the actual units of KOW, but really we just call it dimensionless. Uh, and this equilibrium constant, of course, is related to others that we've already seen, right? So we could describe KLW as a function of the air-water partition coefficient divided by the air-to-liquid partition coefficient, which, we believe it or not, we did cover a little bit uh, in the chapter on um, Henry's Law. We talked about other liquids there. It was, you, if you blinked, you missed it. Um, but anyway, if you happen to know, so a lot of people use the octanol air partition coefficient, KOA, uh, and KAW. So if you happen to know both of those, you could back out of that what KOW is. Uh, but KOW turns out to be relatively easy to measure, so it generally is not that difficult. So you don't usually have to calculate it. Uh, phase change costs cancel because we're going from a, a, a condensed, you know, liquid phase, water, to a condensed liquid phase, octanol. So we don't have to worry about phase change costs. That makes our life easy. Um, and the effects of salinity are pretty easy to deal with because what we do is we assume that solidity is going to change the properties of the water side of the equation, but that it is not going to change what's happening on the octanol side of the equation. Now that <clears throat> that worked great when we were dealing with Henry's Law because clearly salts can't get into the gas phase and affect the gas phase. But here that assumption is, eh, you know, it's, it's not perfect. Uh, it's reasonable, <clears throat> but it's not a perfect assumption because some of the salt from the water can get into the octanol. But as a first approximation, we're going to assume that the salts are largely insoluble in the organic phase, in which case we can use our, our friend, the Sessional constant, to describe how the uh, partitioning between the organic liquid and water changes in the presence of salt because it's equal to the KLW value with no salt times 10 to the value of the Sessional constant times the molar salt concentration. So very familiar stuff. And if we think about the temperature dependence of any kind of water to organic liquid partitioning, remember that um, 
you know, this HEW term here is generally pretty small. It's the amount of energy it takes to take the chemical from the pure liquid up to the water. That HE term is, is on the small side. Um, and it's even smaller to take the chemical from the pure liquid to the solvent when the pure liquid is a, a hydrophobic organic material to begin with and the solvent is a hydrophobic organic liquid. So this is really, really small. And the delta H of this process is the difference between the two. So it's this HE to dissolve in the liquid minus the HE to dissolve in the water. And so you're subtracting one small number from another small number, and it's really small. So frequently we just assume that this is big fat goose egg. This is zero, that the delta H is not important. Now for really, really large hydrophobic molecules like our friends, the PCBs, the dioxins, the brominated diphenyl ethers, for those, we could have a, a, this HLW term could be as high as maybe 30 kilojoules per mole, right? I don't think a whole lot more than that. Um, but for most chemicals, if you don't know what it don't know what HLW is, you just assume it's zero. If you have a really large hydrophobic molecule, you might assume that it's um, 30 kilojoules per mole or so. But keep in mind, okay, to dissolve in the water takes more energy, right, up here than to dissolve in the solvent, right? And the octanol water partition coefficient is the concentration in the octanol or the solvent divided by the concentration in the water. So as the temperature goes down, KOW, KOW will go, think, think, KOW, uh, which, which phase is it happier in? It's happier in the solvent phase. So as the temperature goes down, KOW goes up, right? That's a little bit, you have to think about that for a minute, uh, but that's where we are. KOW goes down slightly as a function of temperature for most chemicals. Everybody's a little different, but for most chemicals. Okay, so again, both of these are similar in magnitude, so the temperature dependence tends to be small. Um, but if you do want to correct for temperature, you use the same kind of equation we've been using all along. Here it's written in, in the form where you're taking KOW at temperature one, which is probably like 25 degrees C, and converting it to KOW at some other temperature whatever yours happens to be, and using your HOW value and the reciprocal temperatures, and yeah, you get it. You get the idea. Ooh, yay, going off, off roading a little bit there. Um, but anyway, so there you are. That's how you um, uh, correct for temperature for Henry's Law, or for, excuse me, for KOW value. Comparing different organic water to solvent, organic solvent to water systems. Okay, so this is where you might have many different types of solvents, okay? And we're going to do a homework example where we choose, we try to choose which solvent we think is going to be best for a certain application. So looking at the different equilibrium constants for the different sorbents or different solvents, you have to remember that the partitioning is always going to be driven by our big three forces, the van der Waals, the polarity, and the hydrogen bonding. So if you're trying to design a, um, it's, I hate it when it does that, it drives me crazy. If you're trying to design a solvent system to extract your chemical out of water, that's, that's the homework problem we're going to do, or the practice problem we're going to do. Um, what you want to do is choose the solvent that best matches your, your chemical, right? And you've probably heard the phrase, likes dissolve likes. So if your compound is strongly hydrogen bonding, then you need a hydrogen bonding solvent. If your compound doesn't hydrogen bond at all and is totally nonpolar, then you want a totally nonpolar solvent. Uh, so you need to choose, you need to think about the three types of forces and choose your solvent based on them. And again, the better, better match between the chemical properties of the solute, which is your chemical, and the solvent, which is the liquid you're dissolving it into, the higher the KLW equilibrium constant is going to be. That's a good place to stop here, and in the next video we'll take up a little bit more of a discussion about, specifically about the octanol water partition coefficient.